Governor Gavin Newsom delivered the traditional State of the State address to the joint session of the legislature. I'm Senator Brian Daly, and this evening I'd like to present the real state of our state. California is an amazing, beautiful state, rich with natural resources and filled with talented and ambitious people who've come from all over the world to make life here. So why are so many things going in the wrong direction? Our cost of living is out of control. Violent crime is at a 25 year high and our streets are unsafe. Inflation is serious everywhere in America, but California's high costs are setting records. Gasoline prices are up for drivers, most recently because of the terrible war in Ukraine. But California has by far the highest cost at the pump. Cross the state line in any direction and you'll save a dollar a gallon. Our prices are even higher than Hawaii, an island out in the middle of the Pacific. What's worse is that California is a major oil producer, but the current governor doesn't want us to use those resources. His plan is to end those vital blue collar jobs in California and instead send our money to Russia or Venezuela. The administration says they want all of us in electric cars. Our electric rates are nearly double the national average and are rising steeply thanks to the rate increase recently approved by the governor's Public Utilities Commission. If you have safe, reliable electricity in exchange for our high bills, maybe it would be worth it. Instead, we are getting blackouts and flex alerts and massive deadly wildfires sparked by antiquated utility infrastructure. If you're a renter in California or a young family looking to buy your first home, the most serious burden is the cost of housing. Housing is so expensive in California that when you adjust the income for the cost of living, we have the highest poverty rate in the nation. A recent report found that the average African-American family has a higher real income in Mississippi. When the current governor was running for office, he talked about his big plans to fix the housing shortage. 3.5 million new homes by 2025. Unfortunately, the big talk has brought no results. The number of building permits has not materialized. We're falling further behind every year. And instead of changing policies to promote new housing, the state is piling on new costs and regulations and even going to court to stop housing developments. These high housing costs are one factor, creating our tragic homeless situation. We have nearly 30% of the country's homeless population right here in California. The state has spent $12 billion to address the crisis under the current governor. $12 billion. But have you seen results? Are things getting better? Big talk and big checks are nice, but the public deserves results and we have not been getting them. Another terrible driver of homelessness is the explosion in the abuse of serious drugs, in particular methamphetamine and fentanyl. The state's laws have been changed to turn a blind eye to drugs. We've stopped arresting drug addicts. Instead, we are letting them overdose and die on our sidewalks. Is this compassion? The governor was a champion of Proposition 47, which lowered the penalties for theft and drug crimes. That law was called the Safe Neighborhoods and Schools Act. Ask yourself, has your neighborhood or school become safer since it's passed? A mass exodus has swept across California. People and businesses are leaving. The state's hostile business climate has real consequences. We're still the hub of innovation, but we're also seeing companies that were founded in the garages and labs of Silicon Valley flee for places where they can grow and thrive. Hewlett Packard, Oracle, Tesla have all moved their headquarters to Texas. Countless other companies that aren't household names have done the same or just never launched in the first place. Our unemployment rate has been so high for so long that we owe the federal government $20 billion in loans for jobless benefits. This is a cost that will show up in higher payroll taxes for the next decade. COVID-19 has disrupted our lives in so many ways, as well as taking the lives of so many of our loved ones. But this administration's choice to shut down businesses so aggressively more than almost any state 
has had enduring consequences for small businesses and working families. Even more heartbreaking is the consequences for our children. This state schools were closed longer than any other state. And the administration's policies around masks, vaccine mandates, and other COVID protocols were stricter than any other state. The results? Terrible learning losses for our school children, as some didn't see the inside of a classroom for 18 months. And terrible mental health challenges as our children struggle with unnatural isolation. That is the true state of our state, and it's a sad state of affairs under one-party rule. Ordinary working Californians deserve better. They need a leader who will take the cost of living as seriously as championing the latest environmental cause. They need a leader who will support growth and jobs and not try to shut down important industries. They need someone who believes the right of children to walk safely to school is more important than the rights of criminals. It's not too late for California. With common sense and new leadership, we can make this state live up to its promise again. I'm running for governor of California. This is about the future of our children, mine and yours. They deserve the opportunity to thrive in the Golden State. If you'd like something different, join me on the road to change at briandally.com. Thank you, good evening, and God bless California.